And the nutrients you use is going to have impact on it as well. What are you using for nutrients and how are you doing feedings throughout the life of the plant now when you're breeding? Some people do it a little bit differently than when you're growing the plant just regularly. So what do you do? Yeah, so I I still rock general hydroponics uh, three-part and it's not like because I'm like, oh my goodness, these nutrients are so much better. Whenever people are getting into uh, growing, uh, I generally, if they go to their local stores or whatever, the likelihood of them finding the general hydroponics three part is probably along the top of the list of things they'll be easy for them to find. So it was really, it was never that I liked that brand better. It was literally just about if a new person does this, what would be the easiest nutrient line for them to five? Cause you know, I mean, or to find, cause you could go get some, you know, oh, well, I really like this, you know, uh, nectar of the gods or whatever. That might be way more harder to find for somebody at their grocery store than something else. They might not carry that line. They might only carry Floriflex or they might, you know, whatever. You know, you could go through, there's, you know, thousands of nutrient manufacturers. So it was literally just about what's the, e- what would be the easiest for a new person to find or what would be the most recognizable. And uh, that, I still grow with it to the, this day just for that reason. And uh, but yeah, like you're saying, I 100 percent treat them different, whether we're breeding plants or if I'm just growing them out regularly. The only thing that kind of stays the same is in the veg cycle, because I generally don't feed while they're in veg because I buy pre-amended soil and the pre-amended soil. I don't know if people know this, but it already has the food in it. That's why it costs so much, because the nutrients that you would need to give them, they're already in the soil. The the plant can literally break down what's in the soil and eat. It's just like if you took something inert and put like dry soil over these dry amendments in it, it's the same principle. The food's already in there. You don't have to feed. So since I'm transplanting, going from like cubes to solo cups to one gallons to threes, and then maybe to fives, whenever I go to flower, every time you transplant, you can't think of it as you're just putting in new dirt. You're literally, you're feeding the plant. That's all new dirt. It's got new, new nutrients in it. So you're technically feeding. I just am not going in there and manually, you know, making uh, a nutrient mix. But the whole time the plants in flower, I just treat it like it's uh, like the end of veg. And I give them equal parts of uh, nitrogen, potassium and magnesium or uh, phosphorus. So I just give them equal amounts, whether it's uh, four, four and four or five, five and five. I just give them equal parts throughout. And the only other big difference is I never switch over to mag sulfur from cow mag. I give them cow mag the whole, the, uh, the whole way through the grow for the extra calcium. And they always need magnesium. So I just don't need the bulking agent with the sulfur. I know some breeders who actually will stick with the veg nutrients throughout all of flowering. Yeah, that's exactly what they I won't do. do anything. That's yeah. exactly what you do. Yeah, that's exactly what I do. I do it like it's transition week. So it's just literally like it's the last week of veg is the the method that I go to. And it's literally just four of nitrogen or let's just say it's five, of ni- five milliliters per gallon of nitrogen, five of phosphorus and five of potassium. And they just stick with I stick with that one because it's a nice balance of everything it needs because I'm not going for giant flower bulks or anything like that. Uh, it's a nice, you know, like a well-balanced diet <laughs> for them hitting that food triangle. And I just carry that all the way through. And then normally, if I was doing a normal flower cycle, it would be at the end of week three, I would switch off of CalMag and I would switch on to Mag Sulfur product uh, because the stretch is over. I no longer need the calcium. There's Mag in both products, so I need Mag all the way through. And then since the stretch is over and now I'm going into the bulking phase after a transition week of flower in week four, I'm now going into the bulking phase of phase of flower. I don't care about the bulking phase of the flower. That's not where my attention is, nor is it where the attention of the plant is, because it's received pollen by that point. The plants, you know, the, that's one of the tricks to making, you know, bigger buds is we are denying them pollen. And by de- denying them pollen, it causes them to swell their buds because they're trying to get bigger because pollen floats in the air or to attract flying pollinators, anything like that. By denying them pollen, it makes the bud get bigger and bigger because they're trying to increase surface area to catch that pollen that's in the air. Well, whenever I've given them pollen, I've specifically got pollen. I'm painting it on like Bob Ross on on each of the buds. Uh, that that thing for bulking up the flowers isn't there anymore because they've already accomplished their life goal. And their life goal is they were trying to reproduce. And now they've reproduced because they're making the seeds. So this clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code Mr. Grow at 15 to save on any of their products.